These are tin crystals being grown with electricity at actual speed. This is an interesting and attractive science project that's also very easy. Here's how I do it. I experimented with uh, many different setups for growing tin crystals using electricity. And the one that worked best for me as far as producing the cleanest videos was to start with a piece of black velvet as a background and then place a uh, sheet of glass on top of that. I then drew a two inch by three inch rectangle out of crayon. This helps retain the growing solution. For electrodes, I use large paper clips bent in a convenient shape, and it turns out it doesn't matter much whether you use uh, smooth curves or sharp points. Once the crystals get started, they're growing in the middle here, and the electrode shape doesn't seem to matter a whole lot. I used uh, just some electrical tape to hold the electrodes in place so they don't wiggle around, and a couple of alligator clips on a power supply to provide the electricity. The tape is nice because it removes easily so that you can clean the uh, plate of glass off uh, between growth periods. I tried several combinations of different types of batteries and they never worked very well for me. I couldn't get enough current to get the crystals to grow fast enough to, uh, to be interesting. What I find that did work very well was a standard AC to DC power converter. You probably have half a dozen of these in your home right now. They're used to power everything from laptops to uh, children's toys. The, uh, the one that I found that works the best for me puts out 12 volts at uh, one and a half amps. I find that if you get below an amp in uh, power output current, that uh, the crystals don't grow fast enough or full enough to be interesting. If you get below about 8 volts with uh, my setup where the electrodes are about 3 inches apart, there's not enough voltage to push the current through the growing, growing solution. Uh, if that all you have is a lower voltage unit, what you can do is push the electrodes closer together. Say if you have a, a 6 volt unit, try putting them an inch and a half instead of 3 inches apart and it should work okay. Attaching alligator clips to the end will make it easy to uh, attach them and detach them from your electrodes. But this isn't really necessary. Most of these come with uh, socket ends and you can usually figure out a way to make electrical contact with the inside and outside without shorting it out. The growing solution is a 50-50 mixture by weight of stannous chloride or tin chloride mixed with distilled water. There are many different combinations that you can use, ratios of weights, uh, but I found the 50-50 works well. Now this was $20 in 2016 for two ounces. That seems a little expensive, uh, but you don't need very much of this, and it, this one two ounce bottle could easily last uh, 40 experiments. For my system, which uses the liquid spread out over a two inch by three inch rectangle, I found the best quantity was obtained by mixing one and a half grams of the stannous chloride with one and a half grams of distilled water. The stannous chloride doesn't dissolve in the water real easily, so you'll want to add both to in a glass container and then use a, a glass uh, swizzle stick or, or some, something non-reactive to uh, help pulverize the stannous chloride into a fine powder and mix it in and just get it dissolved into the water. Once everything's all set up and the solution is ready, pour it into the center. And then use a stick to spread it around. What I found is that if you use more than uh, 3 grams of solution for a 2 inch by 3 inch growing rectangle, that the solution very quickly becomes so thick that you'll get several layers of crystals growing on top of each other and uh, it can look a little muddled, a little confusing. Uh, you can't see individual crystals that clearly. On the other hand, if you use much less, uh, say just 2 grams, the growing solution is so thin that even at 12 volts there's not enough uh, voltage to push the current through it. So 3 grams of solution seems to work about the same, about the uh, best. When you're spreading it, 
make sure that uh, both electrodes are in good contact with it. Once the solution is spread out, plug your uh, power supply in and connect the clip lead. And you should start to see crystal growing, crystals growing fairly quickly. Here you can see them growing out of the left electrode. What's happening is that when the tin chloride is dissolved in water, uh, the tin chloride dissociates into positively charged tin ions and negatively charged chloride ions. When a tin ion makes contact with the electrode that is giving off electrons, the electrons bind with the tin and it becomes metallic tin and it looks around for more metallic tins to connect with and that's how the crystals grow. What you're going to see in any individual experiment is uh, very difficult to predict. Yes, you're going to get crystal growth. Uh, sometimes you'll get uh, very rapid, uh, uh, tightly tight bundles of crystals. Other times you'll just get one or two long, thin streaks. Let's get a little closer so we can see the detail of how the crystals are growing. In this segment, the electrode supplying the electrons to create the tin metal is on the right. Here you can see something very unique about using electricity to grow crystals. You'll see some spear-like pieces of crystals break away from the main body and appear to travel by themselves from right to left. If you focus your attention on one of the perpendicular arms growing sideways out of these spears, you'll notice that they don't move. What that says is that the uh, spear, or the breakaway crystal, isn't really flowing through the liquid as much as it's growing forward at the same rate that its tail end is dissolving. In this segment, instead of a large bush-like structure growing all at once, we have just two main arms growing outward. An interesting observation you may see from time to time is that a crystal arm will appear to be quite gray, quite dull, and then all of a sudden it'll flash and become very bright. What's happening is that the tin crystals grow in a flat structure. Sometimes these won't be perpendicular to the direction you're looking at, so they won't look uh, very bright. They're not reflecting light into your eye. But then they get to a certain size or shape and their weight causes their angle to shift and they'll suddenly flash quite brilliantly. It's very dramatic. I hope this video helps you grow your own tin crystals with electricity. And as always, thank you very much for watching.